free. Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? Big P here. You know, don't you? You know. That's why you tuned in. Uh, we're going to do something different today. We're going to have Dale Nichols on at 5 to 8 in the morning. Um, hard work and dedication. So, over to you, Dale. How are you doing? Uh, I'm all good, Russ. Cheers. How about yourself? It's been uh, oh. been about five, six weeks since I last come on the channel. Uh, quite a lot of developments within the sport, as per usual since then. So, quite a lot to discuss and pick up on. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, exciting times ahead, Dale. As Bean says, yeah, as Bean says. Oh, nice no oh. Santa mug there in the Christmas hey. spirit, nice and early. Right then, there's only one place to start, isn't there? The big fight. It's fight week. It's finally on. Three postponements. Six months down the line. A pandemic out the way, almost. And it's on. For the fans. Frank, fish eyes. We've got it on. Dubois against Joyce. Yeah, it's a good fight, that, isn't it? I think it's a very good fight, yeah. I'm really looking forward to it. It's definitely a fight that... Um, probably has slipped under the radar a little bit because of it being on BT and not Sky and has it sort of captured the casual audience as much as it probably deserves to. You know, neither guy is, you know, massively charismatic or will go out there and sell themselves like like a Chisora would, you know, slapping himself up in white paint. But, you know, you've got a fight here that, that's, you know, it's not necessarily free to view. You've still got to be a subscriber to the channel. But... Yeah. You know, we're not being asked to pay any extra for the fight. So let's appreciate that. Let's get behind this fight. It's two fighters putting it all on the line. I'd probably say more so for Joyce, it's sort of, you know, he has to win more than Dubois. There's no doubt about that. His age is one of the, the contributing factors. He's not exactly an easy sell anyway. He's not really got, you know, a sort of, one promotional company behind him. He's been at Haymaker. You know, he's sort of tagging along on Frank's coattails. So he's probably really only brought him in to sort of feed him to Dubois anyway at some point. Um, so in terms of the loser, I think, you know, it's tough, tougher to come back for Joyce than it would be for Dubois. Um, I think that Dubois seems to be the hot favourite going into the fight. I think when the fight was first announced, it was pretty much a coin flip on the odds. But as time's gone on, performances, I think Dubois was around about a one to four favourite for the fight. Um, I, I mean, I'm looking at the, the the fight and I think those odds are a little bit off. It's a bit I with the, what people think, isn't it? I think so, yeah. I think so. I mean, Dubois, don't get me wrong, he's he's beat all that's what been put in front of him. And he's looked good doing it on very much on, on pretty much all the occasions <laughs> that I've seen him fight anyway. Um, you know, since he beat Gorman, has he really kicked on? Because that was sport, supposed to be, you know, his first sort of coming out fight a little bit. But I think since he fought then, didn't he fight some guy called Fujimoto or something like that? And Fujimoto. You know, he's, he, yeah, and then he fought fought some, you know, couple of toss opponents since then as well. So he hasn't really sort of kicked on since then. So maybe this is the fight where they see him sort of bursting really out onto the scene. It's his, it's his big high-profile fight. Um, but I'm going to raise some eyebrows here, and I think that Joe Joyce will win this fight. He's not exactly got a fan friend. I do, yeah, I do. I, I, I could eat my words, but, you know, he's not necessarily got a fan-friendly style. He's a tough sell. He's got Scam Jones behind him, who's also not very likeable either. Um, but I just think that Joyce, his experience could be quite key in this fight. I think as the fight goes on, he's the one who's gone into the latter rounds of fights more. He's the one who's got all the amateur experience. He's yeah. the one who, you know, if he can weather the early storm from Dubois, I really do think that he can wear him down, invest to the body early, Porky, pay dividends later. Bean makes punching to the body sound like investing in an ISA, doesn't he? That's <laughs> it, yeah. Hey, what but, about uh, added spice and sizzling? 
He's, he sounds like uh, Jamie Oliver, doesn't he? Bean, we're on to you. Well, with um, with a little bit of uh, Oscar De La Hoya's marinating. Marinating. <laughs> <laughs> you've really, you've really got a recipe for success, haven't you? It's like watching. Who's that bird? That that milf who cooks? Nigella Lawson. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's like her. They sound like her, don't they? Yeah. Um, but anyway, coming back to the fight, I think that it, it's a terrific fight. I personally do see a way and a route to Joe Joyce winning the fight. Not many do, but I just think that... I just think that experience in these big fights sometimes kind of is a, is a key factor for me. But I think if, 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 if we sort of wind the clock back over the years... And you think about, you know, like, who's the biggest two names in, obviously, British boxing? It's Tyson Fury and it's Anthony Joshua. They kind of, at, at this point in their careers, had this fight where it sort of kicked them on, didn't it? I mean, Tyson fought Chisora the first time. You know, it was his first real big high-profile fight. It was on Channel 5. It was for the British and Commonwealth titles. And he battered Chisora. And it was this sort of fight where everyone really started to, to hear the name Tyson Fury. Joshua... Yeah, okay, he was always a big name anyway, but the Dillian White fight was the fight where, you know, the big domestic fight for the British title, and it really kicked him onto the next level as well. Yeah. And I suppose for Dubois, they're kind of looking at the same sort of traje trajectory for his career. Can he win this fight, big domestic dust-up, and can he now move on to the next level? And I think with the lack of depth in the heavyweight division, is if he does beat Joe Joyce... He's pretty much banging on the door for for a for a world title shot. He might not have the ranking to back it up, but you'd say he's probably got the win to get him there. Really, if if you're talking Dillian White, who, who's fought a pack of bums to pretty much get his mandatory slot, you know, you you wouldn't say that Joe Joyce is any any less of a win than any of the wins on Dillian White's resume, would you? No. No. I mean, Parker probably is a slight, slightly a level above, but he's, you know, he's he's been in there with Povetkin and just been iced. So, you, you know, for, 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 if Dubois if Dubois wins, I'm sure that Frank's going to be lobbying into the WBO to try and sort some sort of fight with Usyk. Can't see it myself. I think they'll just try and milk Dubois out as long as possible. He's still a young lad, but I think for Joe Joyce. If he wins the fight, yeah. he's got to be knocking on the door for a world title shot. But he's he's quite well in with the sorry. Just one more quick quick, quick one. He, he's quite well in with the WBA, isn't he, Joe Joyce? So w will they try and manoeuvre a way to him, for him to fight Manuel Char? Mm. Interesting, interesting, Dale. Interesting. Have you come up there, yeah. That's it. Go on. Right. I'm going to ask you. Do you think that? Parker beats Povetkin. No. Right. Okay. Well, all the points that you made there are good, but what I want to know is, how are they going to front any of them fights that on pay-per-view after Frank Warren, a.k.a. Bricktop, has put Joyce Dubois on non-pay-per-view with no crowd? How can Eddie Earn put pay-per-views on when Frank's done... Frank's putting a better fight on with Dubois and Joyce on non-pay-per-view. And they're charging 25 quid for the 40-year-old against Joshua, who fought shockingly in Saudi like a frightened rabbit. So what, 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 what's end game here for Sky? That's what I want to know. Um, well, there's been a little bit of backlash, hasn't there, this week around the Joshua the Joshua fight being 25 quid. But as we well know, that the plan was Dillian White Povetkin rematch was also going to be 25 quid. They've started getting the excuses out there now to sort of shift the price point upwards that we haven't got the gate. Eddie Hills is on IFL pointing out all around Wembley Arena. That banner costs 20 grand. That screen costs 30 grand. So to sort of get through to the fans, it's just cost, 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 cost all the time. But the White Povetkin rematch, 
They might think about it twice now that the backlash from this Josh draw wants to be 25 quid. But the original plan, 100%, was for Dillian White Povetkin to also be 24.95. How do you know that, Dale? Uh, without naming names, uh, I do have um, a sort of acquaintance who does work at Sky and he had seen the design of the fight poster. So they were going to do what they did with Joshua Ruiz to put it up to 25. Because Dylan White got iced, they were going to rematch it and charge 25 because they thought people were, in on, were, were on hook. Is that exactly. Exactly. That's what they had him backstage on the subs bench, didn't they? Um, in the, at the Chisora pay per view, and they just kept cutting to him, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I won't put it past them doing that. It's it's pure greed, and what they're doing, they've got a front man in Eddie Hills. He's just fronting it out in the Hills. Yeah, he's just so he's so soaking all the criticism up and just. It's water off a duck's back to him now, isn't he? He doesn't go on any other podcasts anymore. He's got his own podcast. He doesn't do any, He doesn't engage with the hardcore on, on Twitter anymore. You know, all he's doing, he's planning for life after boxing. This, for me now, is some sort of exit plan. As soon as Joshua goes, Hill's all be gone. Yeah, yeah, he's pointing that way. And another thing, they're doing this right, and they just they just don't care, do they? Nobody's allowed, nobody's allowed to question it, because if you question it or start prodding, you get... You get put in an awkward situation. Uh, how can I explain it? Uh, nobody's allowed to pr- prod it, and nobody dare in the boxing industry question it. Like the managers and the trainers around here, I'm not going to mention any names, in South Yorkshire. I know managers, trainers, fighters around here. They don't agree with it. And they, and so they kind of like give me bullets to fire, don't they? Which I'm not really bothered because I don't really. I'm not really bothered about much, am I? I'm thick. But this is how I look at it, right? Nobody's going to question it because they all want to get to the promised land. I said, why don't you pull them about it? And, well, well, you know, we want to get want to get on the sky, don't we? I said, well, it's no good telling me if you're not going to do all about it. We'll get stuck into him. Or don't set them on in, in chat or don't rim them. Because there's a lot of people that rim Eddie here. I mean, like I said to you when I first started this channel, I've been in his company and he's told a joke and people fall about all over the place. And I'm like, I didn't get that. I didn't get that joke. You know what I mean? It's like, we know he's a narcissist, don't we? But he's a bully as well. He's a bully, Eddie, a proper bully. And nobody dare question it. Surrounded by security. He's a kid in a sweet shop doing what he wants. But like I said, if we were to grow a pair, but then again, nobody wants to grow a pair and come on here. They're the only proper boxing people. It's like all them gimps, in it, who leave comments, in it, gimps who have plenty to say for themselves. So they send them, they reply to a mirror for me. Well, why don't you go on channel them? Not even five percent. Not less, in it? it. Less. I bet it's not even two percent who actually want to come on. The rest of them, oh, no, I don't, I don't want to come on. They're all hiding. Oh, I've got my job. I've got a job. I can't lose my job. Or oh, this and that. Oh, I'm shy. Everybody's got plenty to say for the things, haven't they? Plenty to say for themselves. But when it comes down to it, they don't want to be put on the spot. And Eddie don't want to be put on the spot. And it'll be interesting to see now what happens with Rob Tebbett. You know, we'll put it on him the other day. And we all know Rob Tebbett only put it on him. Because me and Terry were hammering him for getting Eddie Hearn on the hook and letting him off. So he went after Bean first, didn't he? I don't know if he's done an Eddie Hills interview, has he? Yes, I haven't seen it. Eddie will not go nowhere near him now, will he? And all this 25 quid's going to do now, it's just going to grow and grow. It's even in Sun newspaper, wasn't it, hammering it? And they're saying that the Fury one could be a lot more than the Joshua Fury one, if it happens. Hang on a minute. He was in the Sun newspaper. It's in the Sun newspaper hammering the 25 quid thing. And it says, I saw it come up on the bottom of my screen last night. It said, Joshua Fury is going to be more than 25 quid, according to Eddie Hill. So you have to check that. Sun newspaper today. Oh, Ross. i have to get a word of Davis to check it out for us. A Davis. Hey, I like a Davis. <laughs> this is all right. Um, and maybe because he sticks it to Griffin. Um, and maybe because he sticks it to Griffin. 
Pardon? Oh, well, Davis. He sticks it to Griffey. Yeah. I can't hear you there. Go on, sorry. I said I like O.R. Davis because he sticks it to Griffin. Who's Griffin? Griffin, you know, the invisible man. Oh, yeah. oh Dale, I'm a different... How old are you, 29? 28. Well, I'm old enough to be your dad, mate, so I, I, I don't watch stuff like that. What's that like? That Casper or something, is it? A Walt Disney film? No, it's H.G. Wells, classic novel. Classic novel? Oh, you read novels as well, do you, Dale? <laughs> I'm a well-educated young man. <laughs> um, anyway, coming back to um, Joyce Dubois, I've got a question then. So, your thoughts. Do you think that domestic fights are a tough sell? No. Even to the casuals? The Even from... Listen, if you're a matchmaker, a manager, an advisor, consultant, whatever in boxing, right? This is, we're not, it's not rocket science boxing. It's pretty simple. Pretty simple. If you've got a kid who's won five and lost one, and you've got somebody else with a similar record, why keep them apart if you're from the same area? Put them in together. And people say, you know what, that's a good fight. They're not world title level. They're area level. And you get a good dust up. Like, for example, about 18 months ago, Dennis's fighters. Tommy Frank could have fought Kyle Youssef and they shit the pants, didn't they? I said, Dennis, there's a thing here, front border control, why don't you get into it? Oh no, we're going in a different direction. Well, since then, what's Tommy Frank done? He's had two squeaky wins on count decisions. So he's fighting Kyle Youssef now. So what happened to going in a different direction? Because you can't be flying anybody in from another country from, for IBO fights now, can you? Because you're paying hotel, flights, fees, sometimes you've got to pay for injections if they're coming from another country, blah, blah, blah. So they're now in a position where they've got to fight Kyle Yusuf for British title. That should have happened 18 months ago. I mean, what are they in the sport for if you're knocking British title fights back? Where, where are you heading? So Tommy, Fra Tommy Frank's now got to fight him, but they think that he's more seasoned. Now he's had these two very close wins. I thought he lost in them, but at least I spoke up and said that. But this Kyle Youssef's beat him three times, but it's a great fight. They're undefeated, similar age. Should have happened 18 months ago. So fights like that need to be made. You don't need to keep feeding them stiffs. This pandemic could be a good thing because if, if it hadn't had a pandemic, Dennis would have just been putting people in for Tommy, wanted to build pad his record out. There can't be any more padding of records now. There cannot be any. The, the fans don't want to see it. Do you want to see fights? Well, I, I get it up to 10 and 0. Yeah, I get it. After that, you've got to roll the dice. If not, whatever you've had out of boxing, consider it severance pay. Take the train, mate. Get out of Dodge. You know what I mean? Fights are not hard to match. Joyce Dubois, what level are they at, would you say? Euro level? Yeah. Well, they're fighting, aren't they? They're both undefeated. It's a great fight. Do we want to see Fujimoto against Dubois too? No. Eggington Cheeseman. That were a great fight, wasn't it? Because they're at the same level. When you're putting people in at the same level, it's a great fight. We don't want to see knockovers. We don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. We don't want to see uh, Dave Allen fighting Luis Ortiz one month and then Bracamante next month, although it were life and death. We don't want to see that. We want to see people on his level. Put him in with Dave Allen. Or Babbitt, if he comes back. He will come back. He can't help himself. Put him in with them. Don't pad him out. You see, because that Danny Morell, that old Dominic Ingle's got, he just fought somebody who, who, who were no good. He should be allowed 10 of them. But after that, mate, you're on your way. You've got to start learning your craft. But the, which brings me back up to Dave Allen's record. Were he 9-0 and when he fought Dylan White? He shouldn't have been in that fight. He should have gone on and had a few more to learn his craft. But fights, in my opinion, it don't matter if they're area, English, British, Commonwealth, European and world. Get somebody on that level and they'll sell. The fans will come out in droves. Or if you had six fights on a card for six belts all the way through levels and each one were 50-50, It'd be a great fight, wouldn't it? It'd be a great show, wouldn't it? 
We'd all love that, wouldn't we? Am I talking to my fucking self here, Dale? No, no, I'm, I'm just letting you rant on. I mean, to be honest, I mean, the way I look at it is um, we love domestic fights. We love competitive fights. Yeah. That's what we, we hardcores want to see. Yeah. But do you think that, obviously, Frank is more aimed towards the hardcores? Hills is aimed more towards the casuals. That much, is, that much is clear to see. It, 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 it's always been that way. One's in it for boxing, one's in it for money. But the reason why I asked the question, a domestic fight's a tough sell, because when it comes to Hills, you've got Ben against Kelly that's been there for the best part of two years. It's never been made. Whereas if that was under Frank's watch, we probably would have already seen that fight. So he's one right and one wrong. Well, Conor Ben's had to go away and learn his craft for a year, hasn't he? And he fought well overnight, didn't he? Let's be right. He did, and it makes me think now that will Josh Kelly even risk the Avanessian fight now? David Avanessian beats Josh Kelly, serves him up. Correct. Right. David Avanessian then... serves Conor Ben up now, serves him up now. But why would he want to fight Conor Ben when he's pushing for a world title shot, David Avanessian, or an eliminator? Why would he go back to fight Conor Ben, who's barely British level, isn't he, really? He could squeak into British level, couldn't he, after that performance the other night, do you reckon? Squeak. Um, against the right opponent, possibly. I thought he fought very well, but let's see it two or three times before we start getting carried away. I know a lot of people were getting carried away with it last night, weren't they? It was all over Twitter. It was everywhere. I mean, I think I think it was Smido on the Boxing Asylum podcast that for the first couple of years of Conor Ben's career basically just turned around and said if his name was John Smith, he wouldn't be anywhere near a TV. And what was Smido saying last night? We're hanging out the back of him. Um, I haven't spoken to him about the fight, to be honest. So I, don't, Smido, I don't know. Stop hanging out the back of Conor Ben if it's true. <laughs> <laughs> Your mate who you went to Poland with, didn't you, in a minibus? Oh, it was Hamburg, were not it, for high Hamburg, Hamburg, all the way there. Did you sleep all the way there? Oh, I slept all the way back, I know well, that We were much. doing all the way there, really enough betting uh, odds for every sport going. I'm going to call you legs, but we love you, really. Magic time, all right. Hey, let me just give a shout-out to the Dempsey uh, Wales. Anybody who wants to eat healthy, go to Dempsey Wales in uh, Brampton, Brelo, Barnsley. We've got all the fancy food here. Look at all that there. Breakfast, dinner, tea, supper. All healthy options. And if you buy food like this, you put a few quid in his pocket and you're getting healthy and you'll end up looking like me. Yeah, go on, mate. Yeah, um, I think with the Ben versus Kelly fight, I really can't see Kelly fighting Avanessian now. Eddie's already sort of you know, putting the wheels in motion for a Ben versus Kelly super fight next year. Um, surely they're not going to run that as a pay-per-view, surely. But it seems and sounds like they're going to try and pull it off. Yeah. So I think usually his, uh, his plan of action with these type of things is, um, he, said he tends to put them on the same card, doesn't he? So they may fight on the same card, perhaps in March, April time. You know, ready for the uh, ready for the big one next summer. What big one? Ben versus Kelly. Listen, I mean, what title? Ty- what title are they even going to have on the line for that? Eh? It, it'd be a tough sell. It would be a tough sell that fight if there wasn't anything on the line. Uh, you know, in terms of an interim belt, something like that, because it's not going to be for a world title. Even having it top of the bill for a European title on a pay per view kind of would detract away from what the fight is. They'd probably rather have no title on the line than, than they would a European title because it just says to the audience, these are limited fighters because that's how casuals would think. If it's not for a world title, it's no good. That's how casuals think. And Hills knows this. Hills knows this. So that's why he will try and slap an interim belt on the line or something like that. He'll already be lobbying to the WBA as we speak, putting the plans in action for six months down the line to get Ben versus Kelly on for an interim belt. And they'll already be writing that check out to David Avanessian to say, step aside. 
They're not going to pay step aside to David Ivanishian. No, just to no, keep him quiet. Think... Hey? Just to keep him quiet. I don't think there's any sort of obligation for Kelly to fight him. When you have you know, be... ever known you know Macho pay step aside for anybody? When have you ever known him win a purse bid? They don't give money away. They're accountants by name, accountants by nature. They don't give money away. Well, how many purse bids has Eddie Bit earned one this year? Six and two. He's, you know, he won one the other week. I, seen it. Well, I can't what? think what fight it was for. It slipped my mind there, but they have won one. Well, they've not won that's... fucking ten in 30 odd year. They don't win purse bids. Dylan White against uh, Pula. Eddie had a billion dollars in his war chest. A billion dollars. Pool left against Dylan White. He couldn't even win first bid. The, um, he was a not grand in the awesome, eh? De Gale against Durell as well. He made all these promises to De Gale, didn't he? Saying, oh, we'll get you our own turf. I'll get you that world title shot. And what what happened? He sold out to Al Ayman, that's and then he and then he got pissed off with De Gale to pissing off to America after. But can you blame De Gale? Because at the time Eddie didn't put his faith in him and invest in him, did he? No. He lost the purse bid. They don't win purse bids. They don't they don't do it, mate. Frank Warren wins purse bids. Dennis wins purse bids. They don't. They don't win them. They don't win purse bids, mate. It's not in the nature to, to why do you want to win a purse bid anyway when the other promoter can put it on? If you lose a purse bid and your fighters the the the, 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 the challenger or the or the champion or whatever, and you lose a purse bid. They put the show on, you just fight in another stadium, but what you lose, you lose all my advantage. You know what I mean? That's what you lose. So when there's somebody's punching when their own fighter's punching your fighter, the crowd cheer like fuck. When you punch that guy, it, it, there's not much crowd to you, you see where I'm coming from. It influences judges. That's why they have purse bids, but I just think that they don't invest in the fight. Look at Steve Collins against Eubank, right? Steve Collins against Eubank. Eubank were the champion, won in five years. He ended up defending his belt in Ireland because they couldn't win a first bid. Then he had to go over there again for the rematch. You're just never going to... You're never going to get a decision in Ireland against Steve Collins when you've got no fans there. It's craziness, mate. Craziness. But for all you hardcores who want to read about what boxing was off, what boxing's like behind the scenes, Google Steve Collins versus Barry Hearn, High Court Action. All the transcripts come up on the screen. Read them all. Take you about an hour. You might know about what goes on in boxing. Because some of the questions I'm getting asked lately, it's crazy, man. The stuff's out there if you know how to find it. It's just a case of plucking it. You know what I mean? It's out there. That's how you get your pokey hardcore badge. Well, um... You haven't given your prediction anyway for George Dubois. Dubois. KO points. Points. Dubois points. Could be wrong, but I'll stick to it. I'm not going to say Dubois early or Joyce late. You know, like all these fucking fence sitters who, get, who don't want to upset anybody. I'm just going to say that he beats him up. He moves like Frankenstein, doesn't he? Joyce. Like Frankenstein, mate. <laughs> and, and they've got that Sam Jones in corner. On the day I seen him in this gym, and he's shouting out instructions to him and, and this and that. Has his trainer not even come over yet? Fucking hell. Unbelievable. Even, is it Ismail Salas, is it, or something? That's still got it. So, is he, um, he used to train Lenaris back in the day. So, you've got Sam Jones in corner. Do all your job. Is it, I'm surprised he didn't do a Dominic Ingle. You know, if you ever watch Dominic Ingle in corner, after the first round, you sit down and you go, <sighs> and Dominic's like, don't worry about it, don't worry about it, Bobby. Look, his timing's out. Just triple your job. Ones and twos, threes and fours. Jesus. Um, just look at it. Then Joe, Joe Gallagher and Steffi Bull, how are you doing? I know you're watching. Couple of, um, couple of, other big fights coming up. Joshua Pulev. Joshua Pulev. Joshua runs him down, mate. I think Joshua stops him. 40 well. years old after Christmas, right? Why are we paying 25 quid for a man 
who's fought terrible in Saudi like a frightened rabbit and he's going in with a guy who's 40 after Christmas. How can that be 25 quid when you've got Joyce Bar free on the other channel? Free. Let me just say that again. Free. And you've got this. 25 quid, an old shot man against a frightened rabbit. It's a no-brainer. Free. Hang on, let me hear that again. Free. <laughs> and it's a top five. 25 quid for a shot. Listen, you go out here, right? there's carpets out here, loads of cars, all nice stuff. You buy the Porsche for 15 grand on an 06, or do you buy the Mondeo for 15 grand that's two year old? You're going to buy a Porsche all day, aren't you? Which would you prefer to drive? It would be the Porsche, wouldn't it? Not a Mondeo. And that's what you're up against. Pull less pulling up in a Mondeo. These other two are in for... One's in a Bentley. Joe Joyce, if he were a car, he'd be a big Bentley, wouldn't it? Woo, big also. <laughs> other one, a big Ferrari, wouldn't it? With nine-speed gearbox. Oh, you've got Joshua, who's a Range Rover with egg gasket gone because they're common for it. And you've got the other one, Paul Huff, in his box or Signia. That's what, that's the difference. But you've got Eddie Hills fronting it out. Four and all, super amateur, super heavyweight amateur star from Billy Ricky. Three by way off. And then he, he's fronting out saying, if you don't want it, don't buy it. We made a, we made a business decision, 25 quid. And then you've got Rob Tebbett hammering him and Coogan's, he, he made a little squeak. You were like a poodle, yapping poodle, Coogan, wasn't he? He impressed me because normally he's got splinters in his arse. But he did ask him and Eddie just, just went straight on him, didn't he? And nipped him in. But he went, all oh, right then. And that, that, that's it. Whereas Rob Tebbett, he actually hung in there in conversation and he kept Bean at it for 55 minutes, didn't he? And it was very uncomfortable for Bean, wasn't it? I wouldn't have liked to have been Bean's wife when he got home with Joe. Could you imagine him walk, walking in the house, checking his belt off? Upstairs. Get up then, Snap. Rough, tough, rugged. Rough, tough, rugged, durable, all action, compelling. Ready for liftoff, Matt, with the blue ribbon division. Added spice. Sizzling. Sizzling. <laughs> what dog's that? Oh, that's mine, that is. I call him David A. He's my little lap dog. Yorkshire Terrier? Yep. Uh, how old? Y Yorkshire Terrier, just like Dave Allen. What you should do with that dog, <laughs> I've got some here. Oh, they're going to be over to up here. What you should do is get a wet wipe every four hours and just wipe around their eyes because what happens is the uh, it builds up in their eyes and it stings them. You know, all the eye bulges. So every four hours, Dale, wipe around his eyes with a wet wipe. All right? Yeah. Right, what else do you want to talk about? Canelo Smith. Canelo Smith, I think it's a great fight, mate. Two undefeated pugs going at it. Great fight. Exciting times ahead, Dale. But why yeah, definitely. Fight? I, I think it's a cracking fight. Um, Smith's size could pose problems for Canelo. I think it might take him six to eight, eight nine rounds to work it out. But I think it would go very much the same way as the Kovalev fight. I think that eventually Canelo will find a way and he'll get the job done. And I do think that he'll stop Smith as well. I think we've all pretty much, you know, all podcasts, you know, on other box in the side of have touched on it. You've gone on about it a few times as well over the years that we all kind of believe that Callum Suki's hiding glass. A lot of people believe that John Ryder beat him. And again, John Ryder's, is he sort of the same sort of size as Canelo? And, Smith struggled with him for long periods, didn't he? He struggled to punch down on an opponent. And Canelo, he's, Canelo, he's, he's the well, number Canelo, one man in the, in the world. He, he's, the, he's the best fighter in the world. He's the best fighter since oh, Floyd Mayweather. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, and I, I think Canelo will find a way and get the stoppage in the championship rounds. 
How many world champions has uh, Canelo beat? Like 14 or 15, was it? We counted up the other day. 16 if you count. It, if you, yeah, if you count regulars and, in, and I think there's one interim champion in there as well. So I think it's around about 15 or 16. Well, and how many uh, has Mondo beat? Three. Ryder and, um, and Groves, three. No, not Ryder, what, sorry, Fielding. What are the Smiths, uh, the full Smith family against former, current, future world champions? Three and 12? Correct. Right. So they could be four and twelve if he beats Canelo, or three and thirteen if he loses. It's likely to be three and thirteen, isn't it? But yeah, like we say, you know, fair play. He stepped up. He has took the fight. It's dragged out a lot longer, probably due to Canelo's lawsuits and etc. And mm. you know, Billy Joe, he's kind of found a way to not get the fight as well as they, despite talking it up for years and years. The same as the Golovkin fight, but he's he. The, the fact of the matter is, he's in there with Martin Murray. Welcome to the big league. He's fought on a YouTuber's undercard, and now he's fighting Martin Murray. Do you think that? Uh... Sky should have put this on because they're not putting any fights on. You saw that interview with Tebbit, didn't you? Where it's been, he, he was saying it's like being in a sweet shop and you can't get your hand in the at sweets or something. I don't get that, but I think there's something going on at Sky, and I think they're really struggling to, to, to buy these things. Me, I think so. I don't think there's any money. I think it's under Zone UK, isn't it? Yeah, I know that, but I'm just saying, why aren't Sky blowing the zone out of water for these fights? Is this what's going to happen in the future? It's all going to be on the zone because everybody will just jump to the zone, won't they? When's the last time they broadcasted anything overseas, Sky? Because they've turned down some, you know, obviously BT have as well. There's no doubt about that. BT have as well. But they've turned down some cards this year, namely Lomachenko Lopez well, being one of them. Brooke Crawford. Brooke Crawford, another one. I mean, I know Davis Santa Cruz. That popped up on Channel 5 as well, didn't it? Big Good fights from that, over the stage. The Charlo card the other week, which was one of the best cards that, that's been on since the lockdown. Yeah. Nothing, you know, the, that Mexican card that Eddie put on, that weren't on Sky either. I can't remember the last time they put anything on overseas. Yeah. All right, then. Moving on, Dale. What else do you want to uh, let rip on? Uh, nothing to sort of let rip on too much because obviously we've got helmets to come, haven't we, next week? So um, we don't want to take away any content from that. So we've got we're brewing up a storm for that one, aren't we, Paul? Okay. Brewing up a storm. Brewing for up a storm for Been helmets. How was voting good. coming on, Dale? Loads of votes. Rec record amount of votes this month, and we have a boy. Record. We have a clear, we're breaking records, Stephanie. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think, Tesco Joe? Record breakers. <laughs> what about the bunts coming out with the funding uh, for boxing? Or is that going to be next week? Steve Bunts is bringing the Midlands name. He's dragging it across the coals at the minute. He's my pal, Steve Bunts, you know. I'm pissed off with Bunce at the minute. I'm pissed off with him. I'm just looking at a picture here of me, Bunce, Clinton and Ryan Rhodes when I was fat as a pig Mitchell in man. Bunce there with painting and... <laughs> Go on, you were saying. So, this, this amateur funding thing and all that, do you think it hasn't happened because nobody can be trusted? Um, oh, no. it, it's not a governed sport, is it? Where's the, where would the money even go to? Can they distribute it across every single gym across the UK? Can it go to the British Boxing Board of Control? No, because it would just pay for their Christmas due. Yeah. So, that, 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 is, that is where the problem lies. I mean, is boxing still a lottery-funded sport? Uh. I think it is, but I think it had its funding cut, didn't it? Yeah. But obviously, how much of that is straight into the EIS, isn't it? EIS. I know. I know somebody who used to work for Dennis, and then she got a job there. She was there a year. She's been there years. She's not there now. So they've obviously they've had cutbacks, haven't they? 
She yep. was with, I think she left Dennis after Hatton uh, left. Um, she's been there years. I forgot her title. GB Summer either operation or something. She's lost the job. But there's a few others. Obviously, I have to cut back, haven't they? But why should EIS get any funding anyway when they've been letting Eddie Earn and, and, and Joshua just run the rule, rule the roost over there? I mean, you've got Joshua there, Boatsy, Coley. They all, they're all up there most of the time. It's for amateurs. It's an amateur setup for amateurs, funded by the lottery. It's not for professionals who take money out of the game. Anthony Joshua's got his own gym in London. Go down there and train there. Shouldn't be allowed up there. I don't agree with you. It's got to be a level playing field. But nobody, nobody says a word, do they? Because what you've got, you've got Eddie Hills pulling up there to see Joshua in fight week. And then he, what he's doing then, they're sniffing around all them kids that are ready to turn pro, aren't they? Well, it, Hills has... He's been panicking a little bit the past couple of weeks. And I think one of the main things he was keen to sort of try and get through again was Joshua being the biggest star in world boxing. Let's have this right. Joshua has never been the biggest star in world boxing. Never. That is Canelo Alvarez. And it's as simple as that. Joshua, there is a fair argument now to not even be the biggest star in Britain. That honour could quite easily be Tyson Fury. He I could be. He's a megastar now in England. He's a lot bigger than, than Big Doss of Femme. Big he's Doss just done Femme numbers against, against Wilder. He's just done numbers against Wilder that Joshua hasn't got near, has he? No. No. Listen, Tyson's a megastar now. And do you know what? We are Joshua. He couldn't have gone any better for Tyson, but without Joshua... So with Joshua's performance in Saudi, whereas he were he were he were doing a Johnny Nelson job, you know, throwing it, but going backwards as he's throwing it. Every time Ruiz moved his feet, pop shot him. Yeah, he, he, if we were frightened to death, Joshua, frightened to death, picked Ruiz's pocket. Joshua's supposed to be this big Hulk, this big he man. He fought like Johnny Nelson, like a coward. If Joshua was the biggest star in world boxing, why is he why is he on a 50-50 split with Tyson Fury then? Exactly. Yeah, good point that Dale. Good good breakdown that. It's like punches to body Dale. It's an investment in the band. <laughs> Do you think Canelo's on a 50-50 split with anybody? Is Canelo on a 50-50 split with uh, Golovkin when he fought him? Is Canelo on a 50-50 split with Callum Smith? No. <laughs> Can Can Canelo ain't giving up 25% of his purses. No, he ain't. No, no, he ain't. You're right, mate. You're right. You've got it down to a T. What, 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 do, what do we think about the pundit work that's that's been out there on TV of late? What, what do you think about that, Dale? Well, I think that Tony Bellew is getting far too involved in fights. I think his performance... Yeah. For, you know, when he was there for the Chisora fight, it was nothing short of disgusting and disgraceful. He's bitter that Usyk iced him. He's a bitter man about that. He always tries to play mind games with his opponents, but he couldn't get in Usyk's head, and it really rattled Bellew that did it. Really rattled him that he couldn't get he couldn't get in, in Usyk's head, and Usyk just he beat him before he even got in the ring, and then he got in the ring and, and embarrassed him even more. In his, you know, in his final farewell. So I think a lot of the pro Chisora screaming was pretty much born out of that as well. Um, in terms of Sky, I like that they've cut back to two on commentary again. I've never been a fan of three men on commentary anyway, um, except for the real big fights. You know, like you, you know, your, your big box office nights. I think that's when it sort of warrants a third man on commentary. Like either sort of had Paulie Malignaggi in, in, the, in the past. Yeah. Or, um, but for me, and I think BT sort of have David Hay, Bunsey and John Rawlings, don't they? Not the greatest lineup, but you know what I'm sort of getting at is that having three people on commentary. 
Whereas I think for a domestic fight or just a regular Sky show, it's a bit, it's a bit of overkill for me. Um, the overall punditry work, well, Frotch hasn't been getting much gig, many gigs, has he? Because he speaks his mind, doesn't he? He tells it straight, doesn't he? They want, they want Frotch to kiss ass, don't they? But he's a multi sofi swimming in Chocha anyway with finances, so he can take it or leave it, can't he? And, I, and he's not really bothered about the fame as much as that, is he? Because some of them are there at Sky and Out. They must surely, to God, know what they're doing, but they must laugh at the behind scenes going, oh, we're trolling, aren't we? There must be some sort of cult where they're in like this bubble, and well, they are in a bubble, but they're in this sort of cocoon in this sort of place where they're, they're having their own little buzz because some of the things I'm seeing Bellew come out with him, Matthew Macklin. To think I actually sat and spot for 20 minutes with Matthew Macklin at Frotch, Yusef Mann. I swear to God, honestly, we're bearing me on the other thought. And then he's behaving well, like that, and he was really good when he first went on Sky, wasn't he? Why, why is Jug ears in the bubble? What is he offering? Is he just there for the piss up? He's got an air transplant, he needs to get his son out there. Did they, did they get two for the price of one with Connor Ben's beard? Madness, isn't it? Unbelievable. Hey, the, 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 the Pain for Pain podcast must be doing all right if um, if Jug Ears is having to also get, get selling on his fitness DVD with Johnny Nelson or his fitness plan, whatever. Why has Jug Ears got a, a, a business online? Oh, he's got two, and he? he's got the Pain for Pain podcast with Jake Wood. And uh, what happened to that? I think it all went down. It all went down. He went on there. Dennis Sue Hobson. <laughs> yeah, I remember listening to that. Yeah, I remember listening <laughs> to that. Yeah, Dennis, Dennis talking about when he had Clinton Woods and Jamie McDonald and Ricky Hatton from, from 19 Note Blob. Is that it, Dale? Yeah, that's it pretty much all from me. Obviously, we've got Helmet we're coming next week, which is going to be an absolute belter. Plenty to get stuck into with that. Um, but, yeah, this one's just a bit of a preview in it to the fight ahead and uh, a yeah. bit of a catch-up on what's been going Helmet's on. Helmet's is going to be fantastic this month, isn't it, Dale? Oh, yeah. All right, get your votes you... in for Helmet of the Month, Porky Corner at mail.com. That's no capital letters and it's no, no S after corner. It's Porky Corner at mail.com. Helmet of the month, get your votes in, and who you think has behaved like a helmet. All right, and what we do, well, it, what Dale does, he adds it all up, and then we do a top 10. All right, peace out, keep on trusting, keep supporting boxing. Thanks for coming on, Dale. You take care. Well, that were Dale Nichols. Hope you enjoyed that. So, wait, I'm going to get some proper graph done now. I've got the dripping tap coming on yet again for his second appearance. So, exciting times ahead. Peace out.